Yeah, because I'm I'm the star of the show. <laughs> I'm prime time, Brad. <laughs> Ah, welcome back to Cartridge Base Radio. I am Donald. I am joined once again by Brad. Hello. And this week we have a special guest uh, He's coming in to actually tell us about things we don't know. Skyrim aficionado, Tony. Hi, I'm Tony. I don't know nearly as much as these guys, I guarantee. Every time I logged into the PlayStation Network or Xbox, you were playing Skyrim for... <laughs> Almost two years. <laughs> I got really good at playing them both at the same time. I mean, it was kind of an art, but, you know, if you just hold the controllers just right, it, it works. Let me tell you how much Tony got into Skyrim. He would text me pictures he had snapped with his phone of his TV and then pasted, like, David Hasselhoff's head onto characters <laughs> and then added little, like, comic book speech bubbles to people with arrows in their crotches. Let's talk about Skyrim, guy. Uh, to our faithful who are like, this is not a cartridge-based game. Um, hard drives are like a cartridge, and you can get it on Steam, so shut up. Yeah. You know, uh, usually we start the show with me doing a big info dump on the game because it's old and no one remembers it anymore. Uh, that doesn't really seem necessary for Skyrim, except... Maybe our listeners are so used to only talking about old games that they're so out of touch that they've never really played Skyrim. I think that's probably unlikely, but for what it's worth, Skyrim uh, released in 2011. Uh, it's a very immersive RPG in the uh, Elder Scrolls slash Fallout vein, and uh, it's pretty great. I think we've all dumped significant portions of our lives into it. We should probably start at the top. Uh, the game starts with you on the worst roller coaster ride in the world to an execution. And this is one point in Skyrim I've never understood. Uh, you're going to the execution, but you're like the chosen one who can stop this dragon. And if the dragon had interrupted, they would have chopped off your head, and then no one would have stopped that dragon whatsoever you know i think my favorite part about that opening scene is just like you get there and they're like hey this isn't one of the guys we're supposed to execute and then the next person in charge is like hey i hear yapping but i don't hear chopping and they just like go to execute you anyway in front of like all these villagers that have just seen like they're all witnesses to this injustice that they're just like eh, we just execute anybody now yeah, probably not the best way to win hearts and minds uh, in the uh, Skyrim Civil War that's ongoing when you start the game. And much to the horror of everyone watching, your face just starts mutating over and over and over in your body type. And and they get done, they're like, yeah, you're the guy we're going to execute. <laughs> we should just kill this shapeshifter because he's creepy. Have any... Have any of you guys messed around with, like, how, ha how have I not made my name, like, Dragonborn at this point? Like, they're asking you who you are. Like, um, guys, I'm the Dragonborn, um, so, like, you should probably let me go. I believe my first character, I named him Ted. So he probably would have been executed in that <laughs> world for having such a horrible name. There's there's too many Teds in in Skyrim, basically. This is just a lot of Teds. Just let's thin this herd. This Ted herd is out of control. <laughs> they are just ravaging the grasslands. There's Ted Storm Shield. There's Ted Bjornsson. <laughs> Ted Arrow in the Knee. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, I learned a fact that changed Skyrim for me forever. Do any of you know, actually know what Arrow to the Knee means? I thought it was just a reference that they replaced... Upper armor and lower armor with one piece. It's proposing. Oh. oh. So that poor bastard got like a fate worse than death then, basically? He got married? He was an adventurer who proposed, so now he's a town guard because he took an arrow to the knee. And when I read that, I was, 
things about Skyrim changed for me. It's like, oh, you didn't actually physically get harmed. Wow. Oh, no. Like, oh, yeah, all the town guards seem a lot less, um, you know, dangerous now. Let's be honest. When you were wiping out entire towns of guards, they never seemed dangerous. I still haven't tried to wipe a town out. I feel so so sad about that. So, um, I, in my main save, I do have a town of just children. And every time I run through it, they hate me. Um, it's that first town you come to after you escape the dragon. I was back there when my level was higher, and uh, I tossed the control on the couch next to me to get up to go get something, and it hit the attack button when I was standing in front of somebody, and my dude swung, and by the time I realized what was happening, they were swarming me, so instinct kicked in, and I just started murdering everybody. And by the time I got done, there was just these children who told me how much they hated me. So every time I ran through that town, I was just like, we hate you. It's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so that's a sad town in my Skyrim. Oh, so many orphans in that game. Um, There's a girl in the first big city that you go to. I think it's Whiterun. Um, and her name is Braith. And if you talk to her, she says, boys, girls, dogs, elders, there's nobody I won't fight. So I, I, instantly I thought, this is the coolest girl in the game. I'm going to adopt her, which meant that I had to murder her parents without her seeing. So I snuck into their house at night, killed the parents. She got shipped off to the orphanage and then I adopted her and it was pretty great. But then... I started, th later on, I met a stray dog, and I thought, well, this is serendipitous. <laughs> so I adopted the dog to see if Braith would fight it, and uh, unfortunately, it never came to that, so my dreams of reenacting Michael Vick in my Skyrim game didn't quite come to pass, but I really gave it the best shot I could. I thought Michael Vick had dogs fight dogs, not orphans. So, he suddenly is so much more horrible in my mind. <laughs> uh, I I guess this makes me worse than Michael Vick, because I was just going to have the dogs fight children. But, in my defense, the child in question was super into it. You're the Dragonborn. Who's going to stop you? Speaking of becoming <laughs> the Dragonborn, uh, the first dragon you fight in the game, I don't know how that fight went for you guys, but the first time I saw it, the dragon yeah. was stuck in that windmill. And it was just wings and a head sticking out of a windmill. And I had to fight its tail <laughs> until it died. And the guards were talking about this hectic fight we just had. But it, I fought a windmill. It is probably far more dramatic for you guys if the dragon was running around and maybe able to attack you. My fight so. was much harder. I don't know, it sounds to me like you kind of, it sounds like the rest of the soldiers basically took care of the situation for you. They built, built a, a wall, if you will, around the dragon to let you kill the dragon. Yeah, so maybe I'm like a special dragonborn. Like, it's a joke throughout the entire land that I was the dragonborn. They're like, yeah, you killed that dragon, but it was just a paper mache thing attached to a windmill. Man. I'm the fake dragonborn. It's like a really somebody was super into books and they're like, hey, let's make a game where you're Don Quixote. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most special glitches I ever saw, um, I called it Air Bear. Uh, I heard a, a bear growl and I was waiting for it to come running at me and it came flying at me from the sky, and then I hit it, and it shot straight back up into the sky, and I never saw Air Bear again. He became one with God, Brad. I don't have any fun glitches like that. The best I got is, like, the like basically just rabbits running through anything, you know, water, <laughs> like, ten feet off the ground. They are just trucking along, though. How long earth have you played bethesda games and not seen glitches 
I, I just, I don't know. I think I just play them as straight as possible. No, I, I was just standing out in the open and Air Bear attacked me. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, like, Submarine Bunny was, like, looking to attack me. I just left it alone. I was like, whoa, stay away from that thing. I once was swimming and I came out of the water and continued to swim across the <laughs> land. And I, incro- I crossed the entirety of Skyrim while swimming through the dirt, <laughs> and I felt pretty good about that. There's a glitch clip on YouTube. It's one of my favorites it, because it's like 10 seconds long, and it's just it's at night, and you're in a town, and this woman swims through the air up to you, looks at you, and says, the gods know what you've done, and then swims away. <laughs> Wow, that would be that would be life changing for the Dragonborn. <laughs> Could you imagine that happening to you in real life? Like you're just like outside your house and your neighbor just swims up, accuses you of something that the gods are aware of and swims away. Uh thanks for the idea cuz I'm I'm going to go do that right now. It'd be a nightmare. <laughs> just fake swim up to the neighbor. <laughs> Gods are really upset about you, man. You should you should really think about your life and just swim away. <laughs> There's a uh, one of the people you can get to follow you in this game. He's really annoying and he just wants to be an adventurer and I think he wants to sing songs about you. Do you guys did you guys ever meet this guy? I met a guy that I had to buy armor for because he couldn't afford it. And, like, his dad's like, don't be an adventurer, stay on the farm. And then, like, you buy him armor and he leaves. And then, like, I got him killed right away. And I felt super, like, I went back to the town where his dad was and, like, just talked to his dad casually. Like, he had no idea that I got his son killed. But I felt really bad about that. Uh, This minstrel guy who wanted to sing my legend, I got really annoyed with him. So I took him up to a very tall waterfall, and I positioned him just right, and then I dragon shouted him off the waterfall, and he missed the pond at the bottom of the waterfall and landed in a ro- on a rock and died, and much the opposite of you, Brad, I didn't feel bad about what I just did. How long did you guys spend shouting things off of cliffs when you first got like uh, the most powerful, like the Fusro Da? Two hours, three hours, four hours. I mean, I I must have been like close to ten. I don't think through my whole like three hundred and fifty hours with that game, I ever got tired of dragon shouting things off cliffs. <laughs> ever. It it doesn't get old. It just doesn't. I I'd like to go into crowded buildings where they had the table all set with you know food <laughs> and dishes and just like rack all their food. You know, just shout it all over the room, and they're like. That wasn't very nice. The lady who runs the orphanage, just the awful lady, uh, she yeah. said something about how I wasn't the dragonborn. She just threw major <laughs> shade at me. I was like, well, <laughs> let me show you what a dragonborn can do. And usually when you fusroda an NPC, they just get back up and they're grumpy about it. But she landed in the fireplace behind her and died. <laughs> And then all the orphans were like re orphaned. And I, the Black Hand asked me to take care of her. And I don't know if that's what they meant, but the town guard were real upset with me. It's like, and I don't know why they come after you. You can drag and shout them away from you. You just shouted that lady into a fire and she burned to death. You have to pay us 25 gold. I don't have it on me. Can you throw me in jail? Which I will immediately lockpick my way out of and just walk out the building. Speaking of companions, I had, uh, I had one game where I'd gotten pretty far in the game. I had done... All a bunch of quests. I got married, uh, did a lot of the guilds or whatever. And I was trying to do the, there's a mission. I can't remember if it's the main quest or if it's in the Civil War quest line, but you're trying to broker a peace deal. Uh, so you all go up to the Greybeard's Temple on top of the mountain and uh, they're negotiating and having a meeting. All the important people are sitting around a table and you're there also. But at this point, I had, from completing all the Black Hand quests, I could summon the ghost of, like, the leader of the 
Assassin's Guild in Oblivion. And I could also sum I couldn't summon, I just had uh my wife Mule the Lioness with me. So like while they're doing these big fancy peace negotiations, like the ghost of the one guy is like telling me all about these awesome murders that he committed, and Mule is like telling me all these stories about when she scared a guy so bad that he crapped his <laughs> pants. It was <laughs> just like in the middle of the meeting and like all the other people are trying to negotiate a peace treaty. And uh, it probably wasn't, like, super appropriate for them to keep telling these stories in the middle of the negotiations. Wow. <laughs> but you have to be there. You're the dragonborn. They're not going to ask you to leave. Can, can your wife and ghost wait outside, please? Nope. <laughs> They're with me. <laughs> I didn't marry an adventurer to not bring her along on my adventures. Could have married that nice lady that runs the sawmill if I didn't want to have a traveling companion. Wasn't it the uh, the first town shop owner whose sister was in there with him? And like in your second conversation with him, he's like, hey, you want to marry my sister? Like, dude, I just wanted to buy a leak. But what? <laughs> I, I think that's Bellathor, who's like my favorite character in the game, because he just shouts for no reason, and he's kind of mean for no good reason. He's just, hey, what are you buying today? If you're not buying anything, then you're just wasting my time. If I had a sister, I'd sell her. And like his sister's like right there, like, hey. But if you put a bucket on his head, it solves all those problems. Do, you, do any of you guys have like characters that thanks to just the randomly generated acts, like basically end up dying, getting killed by vampires or dragons or whatever. And they just, they're just like Bellathor, for example, like he is just this pile of ash. Like every time I go back into town, <laughs> it's, it's so sad. The townspeople are really mad. Cause every time you walk by, you give the pile of ash a high five and knock some of it around. <laughs> hey, Bellathor. <laughs> But for some reason, he's like, hey, what are you going to buy? There was, uh, not in Skyrim, there was in Oblivion, there was one one quest where you're, like, watching this guy and, like, keeping track of his timetables or something. It turns out he's a psycho or something. And, like, if you get far enough, he acts on his psychoness. I think he's having delusions or something. But he ends up, like, attacking somebody in the middle of the town, and then the guards come and kill him. And his body is just in the middle of the street for eternity. Every time you go by, you're like, oh, there's that poor guy that was losing his mind. And instead of helping him, I spurred him on, and then the guards killed him. Poor guy. I mean, just just grab his foot and drag him somewhere. You know, put him on a nice bench. <laughs> uh, there was a mission in there where you were attending a wedding of some sort. And then some assassins come, and you're supposed to stop them. But someone in playing my game, mainly me, accidentally dragon shouted the wedding party. Then everyone was super mad at me and I didn't get paid for that mission because one guy said I wasn't going to pay you. And then he got dragon shouted off a cliff. <laughs> I don't know how. And then I just went in with a giant axe and I extracted my money. People were super mad about that. I still don't know why. For some reason. So, we need to talk about the most important thing in Skyrim. It is the war with the elves. Well, the war with the elves is kind of also... It relates to the civil war that's going on in Skyrim between the citizens of Skyrim and the Empire as a whole. And the argument... To stay in the Empire is that they're all under attack by the High Elves and they need unity to be strong. I guess the argument uh, for an independent Skyrim is just that the Empire sucks and they keep trying to chop your head off without a trial. Which you witness firsthand. But the problem is the Elves, which after you did some research, Brad, are nowhere near Skyrim. Yeah. But they're using them as a MacGuffin to have this war. So the elves are on the other side of Tamriel, completely unaware that this is going down. Well, I mean, I think the war between the elves and the empire is a real thing, but Skyrim's not really in threat because the elves are all the way on the other side of the empire from Skyrim. It would be like if uh, Mexico was attacking the U.S. and we're like, hey, Canada, you got to get in here, man, because you're, you're in danger. It's kind of an excuse for the Empire to take 
soldiers out of, you know, like draft and conscript Skyrim citizens and make them go fight the elves. You know, it's not really a threat to Skyrim, uh, but it's their excuse for keeping Skyrim under their control. Oh, I was going to say, didn't the Nords have it figured out anyways? Maybe that was, that was why they were conscripting them all is because like basically the Nords took their elves and just threw them in caves and said, you're not coming out of here. Like, just go ahead and turn into these hideous, like cave dwelling creatures and you'll just never see the the light of day again. (laughs) So maybe there's like, maybe that's why they're, you know, getting all the Nords involved in this war because they're just so damn good at controlling elves. Yeah, it could be. Or, you know, cannon fodder. Yeah. Well, there's that. (laughs) Why would you want the people from Skyrim in your army? Because I've met the people of Skyrim, and they suck at fighting. (laughs) Like, the one big war or battle you witness, everyone's just, like, swinging. But no one's killing anyone. So you have to go through there just murdering people to get this job done. They're, like, just clanking swords. They don't know what to do. You know... Honestly, I would really like to see the elves try to conquer Skyrim because it is a giant, mostly empty land mass uh, with a hostile climate and dragon attacks. Like, just random dragons come by and burn down all your stuff. And I just feel like the Nords could probably fight a pretty effective guerrilla war and uh, not really be at too much threat of being conquered by the the elves don't forget the flying bears though because that's also a thing apparently gotta watch out for the sky bears yeah weaponized sky bears and prophet ghost women the worst part about those dragon attacks i always thought was after i had just gotten done stealing everything from a temple or a cave and it's always happened i'd be marching somewhere to sell all my brand new loot that i just happened to find and a dragon would attack while I was encumbered. <laughs> so before the fight started, I if someone saw me, they'd just see a guy like dumping all the crap out of his bags. <laughs> and then being like, okay, it's near the rock in the tree. Because this fight's probably going to take me a lot of places. And then I'd always somehow never be able to find that loot again. <laughs> the townspeople are watching. They're just like, man, that guy has a lot of forks in his pack. <laughs> I can't help myself. I'm like, oh, a burnt book? Yeah. <laughs> I, I need that. I don't know what classes you guys played, but every time I try to make a new one, I always end up being a stealth archer. Yeah, it sort of just defaults to that. No matter what your intentions are, you're just going to end up being a stealth archer who has smithed thousands of iron daggers and enchants the heck out of items. I did like when you get high enough in archery, you could sit outside of a keep or a castle and just pick off everyone before you even go in. And you'd always leave one guy somehow who would scream for everyone to help <laughs> him, and they're all dead. He's like, sorry, buddy. <laughs> that guy's in shock. He didn't notice his friends just falling down and dying all around him. You guys never even, like, dabbled in magic or anything? I tried a magic character once, and it just, it was really not set up for it on the controller. Like, you could either have, like, two spells, or you'd have to constantly, like, go into menus. Um, So I, I did eventually have one character who was good at the, like, casting the fear spell, or the spell that makes people turn on each other. Um, I think it was illusion magic. So that was kind of fun to just like go into a dungeon instead of fighting people, just be like, you're afraid of me. You're going to fight each other. (laughs) That's kind of like a Jedi. I think I had a healing spell on one slot just for after I did something stupid, like jump off a cliff. I could just heal up real quick and then climb back up the cliff and try it again i'm a fan of paralysis basically i just like i just run around and just paralyze everything in the, in the world and then kill it slowly stab it <laughs> with a dagger oblivion let you make your own spells and that i had a spell on that that was really fun it was invisibility and fire damage which sounds like 
you wouldn't want to turn your enemies invisible, but with the fire damage, you basically turned everybody into like a Balrog. Because they would just be like this fiery outline of nothingness in the shape of a person. Uh, so that was pretty fun. When I was playing a uh, Morrowind on the PC, I, I was on the internet and I discovered how to open the, the console commands, which this is the greatest way to break any Bethesda game is get into the console. And it's like, I wonder how many zeros you can add to the jump strength. <laughs> So I just held down the zero for like two minutes, and it finally, I guess, stopped me. And then I pressed the space bar, and the world vanished. And then I was in this blobby nothingness. And then I came up through the ground, and once again rocketed in the sky. And somewhere on a hard drive is that save, and I believe that character is still doing that. Just over and over. You just jumped through the multiverse or what? <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't stop and just kept going through all the universes. You're just like flying along. You're like, oh, hey, this is Fallout. Oh. <laughs> now I'm in an Avengers movie. Hi, Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> it's this real low poly thing flying through the Avengers. <laughs> Oh, you know, my brother did a similar thing in Morrowind because you could also craft items. And depending on how powerful the... I, I think they used soul gems back then. I don't know. I didn't play a lot of Morrowind. But depending on how powerful the item you were using to make the enchantment was, you could, like, really go crazy. So he made a ring that was uh, basically the same thing. It was like a jump ring. And he set... He set it to such a high value that when you came back down to the ground, you died from the, you know the jump impact and falling back to earth. Uh, and I think he named the you can name the items. I think he named it "Want to Get High." Nice. <laughs> uh, there's a thieves guild in Morrowind, and before I knew what I was doing in that game, I discovered stealing, like any good Bethesda game, and I robbed the thieves guild. And then they wouldn't let me in because I robbed the Thieves Guild. I was like, isn't that the best application? You're the master thieves and I robbed you blind. And they wouldn't let me in. <laughs> Just not right. Jerks. So, the Jarls. I call them Jarls. They're hyper ineffective in what they do. Because all they do is sit in a cool chair and tell you to go do stuff for them. And then take the credit. That actually sounds like they're super effective at what they do. Like They get to just hang out, sit in their dope-ass chair, look awesome, tell you what to do, They make you do all the work, and they're just like, oh, I guess I'll eat this feast while I'm waiting for you to get back. They eat a lot in Skyrim. They just always have huge tables of food. There's like no fat people in Skyrim either. They're just eating all the time and they never gain any weight. I, it infuriates me. <laughs> I think about eating a big meal and I put on five pounds. <laughs> Maybe you should move to Skyrim. There's something in the water. I live in Washington. It's basically the same thing. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll go for a hike and I'm like, hey, this is a lot like Skyrim. Some random joggers running by and you scream fuss or da at them and they go hurling off a cliff. You're like, sorry. <laughs> Then a cop walks up, he's like, give me $25 or you're going to jail. For two hours. <laughs> you're going to have to spend two hours in jail if you don't give me 25 bucks. And it's like, all right, I'll give you the 25 bucks, but I also want to trade you all these leaves that I picked up on my hike for your service revolver. Can we make that deal? He's like, yeah, that's a good deal. <laughs> He's like, no, and then he turns his back and you crouch down behind him and take the gun. <laughs> That's how Bethesda games work. So, did you guys get married in the game at all? And if so, who did you pair up with? I got, I didn't, well, wait, I married Mule the Lioness, I think. Can you even marry her? I don't know. Maybe I just was, like, having relations with her. I'm, I'm not sure. I married Mule once, and it's kind of like one of my favorite things in the game is... I've seen other people talk about this and they get really upset because she has this friend, a male friend named 
Aaron who follows her around. And people are like, oh, yeah, I married Mule, but then I had to kill off Aaron because he was always around. But it's like their backstory is Mule went into a ruin and like got nearly killed by one of the traps in there. And Aaron like found her and dragged her back to civilization because the ruin was in the middle of nowhere. Nursed her back to life because she was almost dead. Lets her live with him. Takes care of her. Follows her around. Constant companion. And she has zero interest in him at all. She marries the first person that can retrieve her sword that she lost. She won't shut up about the sword. And as soon as you bring it back to her, she's like, hey, let's get hitched. Like, I have never seen anyone get friend zoned as hard as Aaron does in this game. And it feels so bad for the guy. <laughs> like, I just want there to be a dialogue option where you retrieve her sword and she's like, hey, let's get married. And you can just be like, hey, what about this nice guy that's been taking care of you and obviously, like, cares about you a lot? Maybe just give him a chance instead of just talking about your sword all the time. Can you give him the sword? No, I don't think you can. That would be that would be a really kind thing to be able to do. I married some lady who every time I walked by, she said she hated me. <laughs> and they gave me a ring. And I was like, eh. So I offered it to her. And she's like, oh, let's go get married. I was like, okay. <laughs> I never figured out what I did to make her hate me so much. And then I think I tried to marry the girl in the Thieves Guild. Okay. But she said no. <laughs> it's like, that's understandable. So I stole her purse. <laughs> she would respect that, Brad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess. Um, I've played through so many characters. I've been married so many times. Uh, besides Mule, uh, which was great because then she'll go on adventures with you. Um, I married this one lady who was just all her dialogue was like, oh, thank goodness you're back, my love. And what do you want to do today, my love? And like everything was like, blah, 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 super romantic. And then another playthrough, I think I married, I think she was a merchant of some kind. And she was just like the exact opposite. She wasn't hateful, but she's just like, Oh, well, you're back. You brought some wolves with you. That's awesome. And we live in the middle of nowhere. And I don't really like this house. It's next to a swamp. And it was just, it was 10 times better than, uh, you know, like Miss Lovey Dovey. That would get old, definitely. The Lovey Dovey crap. I don't, everyone just seemed to hate me in Skyrim. I tried to be nice, but it just, it always ended up bad because. In most Bethesda games, when someone makes me mad, I just kill them because it seems easier. And then I just have towns full of people who despise me for mass murder. The less people are mean to me, then I don't get upset and then I don't have to kill other people. I figured you kill one, everyone else is going to learn not to upset me, but it it never works. You, you should just walk around with a sign or something. Don't Don't be mean to me. Maybe that worked. <laughs> Emotionally unbalanced. <laughs> and dragonborn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I fuss her dot a man just to watch him die. <laughs> just to watch him fly. <laughs> <laughs> Someone yelled pull and I got scared, so I shot him over a wall. The other thing that's kind of cool about uh, getting married in this game is you can be a gay character if you want. And. You can have a relationship with pretty much all the available characters. You can even get married, and they're totally fine with it. Which, you know, in 2011, America was not fine with that. But the land of the Nords, these people that, like, worship sky gods and uh, have magic and stuff, they're, they're totally fine. They live in little shacks, and they are ten times more progressive than the United States was at this point. Well, wasn't that – that was basically their shtick. They're like, I don't want you to tell me what to do because I'm a Nord. I would love who I want to love. Um, but you, you can even get married, and there are no other gay couples in all of Skyrim other than you. Like, you have invented gay, and – you go to get married, and they're they're not even like, huh, we've never done that before. Like, they are just totally like, whatever. 
you know, like yesterday we didn't have dragons and now we do and women are marrying women and whatever. We're just, everything's fine. There was like some shop that I remember in, I think Solitude, that sold potions and it was like some old cranky old bastard and some young dude. I don't know. They may or may not have been related, but like they might have had a thing going on behind closed doors. It's all good. You know, once a dragon tears its way through your city, you have much bigger problems than being worried about who's dating who. <laughs> you got problems like, is the dragon kind of come back and eat me? And they don't even seem that concerned about that. Like a dragon will fly in and attack and they're all panicked when it's there. As soon as it flies away, they're just like, well, back to work. Better go open my fruit stand and ask <laughs> you if you want fruit when you walk by. <laughs> dragon attacks aren't going to sell fruit. <laughs> My brother's laying dead across the stand, or my fruit stand, but it's okay. Would you like an apple? <laughs> I, I'm just going to look at the corpse, the burnt corpse of my loved ones all day while I try to sell leaves and skulls. I mean, how much does he want for the skull? It's a pretty good deal. You know, uh, I ate the skull just to find out what its el alchemic properties were, and... uh it was not easy to eat that skull or the entire deer antler that I ate to learn that would make me a little bit better at healing. So your character was just a crazy person who sat in a corner eating bones? <laughs> no, I went into a store and bought all the bones they had there and then ate them in the store in front of the cashier. <laughs> I'm like, all right, bugs. <laughs> oh. Did you... Like lock eyes while you did it and just eat a human skull and then he's like, I'm gonna give you a ten percent discount if you promise to never do that again. Use your ten percent discount to buy some antlers and then just did it again. <laughs> what is this? Oh, it's lavender. It's a plant that grows and it smells nice. I'm going to eat it. Oh, a bee. I'm going to eat it. Please leave my shop, sir. Your character at one point squatted behind a bush and then just let out the most ungodly scream as you had to pass all that. But I was undetected while I was doing that because I was squatting. Oh, there you go. I mean, stealth poop. Um, there was one merchant in, you know, where they opened the little stands. Yeah. And I noted exactly where she stood. And then when she left for the night, I stood in that spot. And then I brought up the weight command and moved it up eight hours suddenly she was just there in my face and the first word she said to me is oh i didn't see you it's like <laughs> <laughs> you shoved me out of the way and you're like oh <laughs> i love the weight command in that game you can watch the, just the most messed up stuff happen. I love the sleep command because I wish real life was like that. I wish I could just like look at the bed and be like, I want to sleep for eight hours <laughs> and have that work. Yes, I would like to save my life. I'm going to go jump off a cliff, then reload. <laughs> One thing I hate about this game is there's a moment where they ask you if you want to ride a dragon. Yeah. And the music's all dramatic. And I was so excited and it said, you walk up to the dragon and you push a button to ride the dragon and then you see a load screen and then the thing it loads and the dragon's like, ah, oh, we arrived. <laughs> I was so angry that my dragon flight consisted of a load screen and on the Xbox 360, that was a long load screen. <laughs> And then he's like, hey, we did it. Like, on the on the PS4, it was a game-breaking a game breaking crash, so you kind of had, had one up on me there. Yeah. <laughs> so it could have been worse. You could have flown over Skyrim and looked down as you fly, but instead it was a load screen. Now, just out of curiosity, yeah. was the load screen an advertisement for the expansion pack where you actually do get to ride the dragon? Because that would have been perfect. I didn't buy any of the expansions for Skyrim. By the time the expansions came out, I was at my like 300th hour and I just looked at them and said, I can't, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that last boss fight was so terrible. I can't do it again. So you never got to build your own house? Yeah, come on. That's like the best. I built some houses in Fallout 4 and 
I'm not too sad that I missed it in Skyrim. It's a lot easier in Skyrim. It It's more like hiring an architect. Like, you just collect the materials and you're like, I would like this type of house. And then they make it for you. Oh, so that's nice. Like, I want to duplex. And then you can adopt an orphan and make her fight dogs. Yeah, that's very true. My orphan just, like, goes in the basement and stabs things. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> but she is <laughs> she's mean with the knife i'll tell you that much it's like a batman origin story <laughs> like parents got killed adopted by some crazy guy and just spend your childhood in a basement stabbing things well that is yeah that's the other piece of the puzzle is i also have this hideous habit of collecting skulls <laughs> troll or human skulls and i just litter the living space with Piles and piles of skulls. I wonder why my adopted daughter is in the basement just <laughs> stabbing the holy heck out of everything. I, I'm i actually curious, Brad. Can you tell me the Batman origin story? Because I'm not <laughs> sure you know it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Batman's parents get killed. And then he gets adopted by this rich guy who's crazy. And um, he's... He spends his childhood in the basement training for combat, and then him and the rich guy go out and like fight crime, and uh, he's he grows up to to be Batman. Okay, that's been your Brad doesn't know anything about Batman moment. <laughs> and, and as a child, Batman's always like whatever the situation is, he's always like holy whatever the thing is, rich guy, because it. That that's the guy. So you're you're thinking of Robin? No, no, this is Batman, but when he's a kid. What? <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking or if you're serious right now, <laughs> and my head is starting to hurt. I I honestly I wish I had known like one of the villains' background stories, so I could have just given that instead. And you'd be like, "No, Brad, you you've been cheering for the Riddler all along." And um, there's nothing wrong with that. He's a good guy. So, yep. we're getting pretty late in the show here. I got one more Elder Scrolls story that I want to share before before we're done with this show. And uh, that is the time that I started a civil war in Oblivion. Uh, and what had happened is, I played through the game, I did most of the side quests, you know, all the guilds, everything. Um, and in the course of doing all this, I became a hero. And I made a lot of allies and friends and stuff. And I was done with the game at this point. And I said, how oh, the heck with it? What if I just became an outlaw? Like, I just, I'm going to commit one crime. I'm not going to pay my fines. And we'll see what happens. So I go and I just, like, stab a guy in the middle of town. Guard runs up. He's like, hey, you, you stabbed that guy. Now you have to give me $100. And I'm like, nah. So then the guard starts attacking me and more guards come. And I hadn't thought this all the way through because my allies all jumped to my defense right away. So, like, guards are chasing me through town and I'll just run by a shopkeeper and he sees this and he's like, <laughs> die, Imperial! And he jumps out and starts fighting the guards. <laughs> and then, like, some people took the guard side. So then they're fighting me. And then, like, people would get hit by stray arrows or magic attacks or whatever. And, like, everybody in the one city was just dead. Like, I ran into the Fighters Guild. I was already a member. So, like, guards are pouring in, and the Fighters Guild is trying to defend me from an infinite spawn of guards. Uh, everywhere I went, just, like, guards chasing me and citizens chasing them to defend me. I went up to the town. Uh, I think of, I think it's Bravel. It's the one furthest north. Um, and, like... The countess that runs that city ran all the way from the palace down to the front gate just so she could punch me in the face. And, you know, by the end of it, just so many casualties, so many dead guards. Um, the the mages guild in one city was just like a militia, like roaming around town, just killing people. Uh, I kind of broke oblivion. And inadvertently started a civil war. I wish that game came out with a PS share function because I want to watch that. Uh, I never finished Oblivion. I got to the end and they're like, you have to open the gate to summon the last boss. 
and I clicked the button to open it and the game crashed. I was on PC and I went to load and I clicked load and it it started and I was in a prison cell and Patrick Stewart walked up. That sucks. I was like, I, I don't want to <laughs> see you, Patrick Stewart. And I'm not playing through this again to see the ending. Yep. And just head it over to YouTube, watch the ending. <laughs> I had to, to finish that game, I had to not cheat, but kind of take advantage of things a little bit. I had to build an entire invisibility suit uh because going through the the portals uh and doing the the oblivion plane areas was just so annoying and so repetitive that i would just turn totally invisible and just cruise through them as quickly as i could uh and one of the missions was timed so that was actually pretty handy uh, but I just got sick of like going through these lava areas, fighting Darth Mauls over and over and over. And I was very glad to, uh, to have that out of the way. I think the weakest point of any Bethesda game is usually the main storyline. Like everything else is super fun. And the main quest is just usually terrible. Did you buy the horse armor though? That's the real question. That that was a hard pass for me. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, any time a horse died, I was like, you know, if I'd had that armor. (laughs) Horses are a plenty in a Bethesda game. You just see someone riding one, you can shoot them off a horse and be like, I just found this horse. That's weird. And you have a new horse. The fine for stealing a horse is so insignificant that I pretty much just like, anytime I needed a horse, I would just steal it, ride it to whatever town I needed to then be like, oh. Here's your 15 gold. I would uh, steal a horse and then fast travel to where I was going. They won't let me ride a dragon without a load screen. I'm not going to ride a horse without a load screen. (laughs) Take that. (laughs) All right, so Skyrim, the not cartridge-based video game. Yes. Um, Tony, any Um, final thoughts on Skyrim? You know, I just actually can't stop playing it, unfortunately. It, even since it came out on the, the remaster, basically I'm like stuck playing the same character for like the 900th hour, and uh, it's pretty incredible. Are you like half a decade into this game? <laughs> In like real lifetime, yeah. Or, or do you mean like actual game time, like where the day elapses like much, much quicker than a real human day? N- no, your real life. Ten, ten years, yeah, probably close. Wow. Someday... They're going to place you in a coffin and put you in the grave and someone's going to say, throw in his copies of Skyrim. And they're going to have to take the bodies out to put the games in. I'm like, just leave it there. He would want it that way. And I want my pile of skulls. <laughs> just throw like just a whole bunch of skulls in the coffin with me and I'll be happy. Like he had these in his basement. He's dead now. We can't ask him where he got all these human skulls. <laughs> there was a little girl down there stabbing things. <laughs> Brad, any final Skyrim wisdom? Um, well, as uh, as two town guards once said after I saw them bravely kill a pig, <laughs> for the Empire! And with that, we are Cartridge Base Radio. Uh, thank you, Tony, for stopping by. Hey, it's been fun, guys. Thanks for having me. And Brad, I will see you next week. Is that better? It, it, are, you, are you Nine Inch Nails? <laughs> you know, the weird thing is, I think there's an arcade game that makes like these same noises as part of its sound effects, and I can't remember what it is. Zach's song. Yeah! Yeah! Tony is actually just Zach.